All right, welcome to the Kids Code Camp Unity lesson. Uh, for this lesson, we're going to be uh, making a really, really cool uh, maze game where you navigate a rocket to find the to find your target. Um, quick note: I will assume that you already have Roblox or not Roblox, sorry, Unity installed. Uh, if you do not have that installed, go do that right now. Uh, but with that said, let's hop in. So first thing let's do is open up Unity Hub. Now, yours might look something like mine. You might have a lot of stuff here, or it might be completely empty. Uh, before we begin, come down to this Installs tab and make sure you have at least one of these installed. If you don't, click Add and then do Unity 2020 uh, LTS. You want one that says LTS, that stands for long-term support. That means uh, it'll, you can keep using this for a while. With that done, let's go ahead and click New. Want a 3D game, let's call this uh, Rocket Maze of Awesomeness. and hit create. Now this might take a little time to load. That's okay. Just let it just let it do its thing. All right, while this is going, let's do something real quick. Open up a new t Google tab and go to Unity Asset Store. Store. And click on the first thing that comes up. You should see this or something like it. Now for this game, we need a rocket, but, and, but while you can model your own, that's too much work. So, let's go to the asset store and search for cruise missile. And then this first thing to come up is the thing we want. So, uh, let's click on it. And then you should have a account. And this is exactly what we want. Yeah, so anyway, you should have a Unity account. So you're going to need to click here, click sign in. And if you don't have one, go ahead and create one. And it signed me in automatically, but you'll have to go through and sign in. And then right here, it should say uh, get or download, depending on if you already have this. Uh, but once you have it, go ahead and click open. And Unity has open now. Go ahead and click open in Unity and click open Unity Editor. And it should open this little page here. Now, these are all the assets I have. Just, if you have a bunch of assets, uh, don't don't worry about it. Uh, we just want to find the one that right here that says Cruise Missile PBR and click Import. And let that import. Shouldn't take too long. There you go. Once you get this port, this little page here, click import again. Let it load. That is one thing about uh, the Unity editor as a whole. It's a lot of waiting around. And you should see down here, you have a little folder with say a tin or however the heck you pronounce that. I'm not even gonna try. Anyway, so we can close this now. We don't need it again. And full screen this. All right, so what? this is our Unity Editor. And this is the 2020 edition, uh, which means it's a little different from how it's been in the past, but overall it's the same basic idea. So right here in the middle, 
we have a scene view. And uh, this is where our game will get built. This is where we will see what we're doing. So to move around it, uh, hold right click and then move the cursor. And then and you can see you look around a little and push W, A, S, and D to actually move. Go ahead and do this, by the way. Move around your scene a little bit. So the next thing I want you to look at is over here. This is the hierarchy. Basically, it's like a organizational system for your game. And right now you can see there are two things in here, a camera and a directional light. And you can see right here in the scene view, we have a camera and a directional light. We won't really be messing too much with these, so just leave them there. So the next thing I want you guys to notice is this, ins this uh, blank panel over here. When you click on something, let's say the camera, you see it shows up with a bunch of stuff. The inspector uh, will, mon will show us all the properties that a certain object has. In this case, it's the camera. So it'll show us, so with the transform, it shows us where it is in the world, and it shows us all the properties of the camera. The last thing I want you guys to, to check out is down here at the bottom. This is, this is basically a file explorer. That's really all it is. It's just a nice, convenient file explorer. So I'm going to, if you hover over, over the edges, you can kind of see that there are little arrows that show up. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And bring, scoot that over and scoot that over. Because I like to see my scene view here. So, now that you guys know what's going on a little bit, let's get started. First thing we want to do is come over to the hierarchy over here, right click, and click 3D, 3D object, cube. And we're going to rename you border. Now, you can see there's a cube. Surprise, surprise. But you can also see with this kind of, with this like grid here, it's not in the middle. I want this to be in the middle because it's going to be important later. So what I want you guys to do is come up here to this transform section, right click on or sorry, right click on the name and click uh or excuse me. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Yeah, so right-click on the name and click Reset. That's what you want. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> so, you'll notice the cube is now in the middle here, and that's exactly what we want. So the first thing we need to make our little maze is we need to make a border, so that way you can't just fly away and run, run off. So... You notice down here, or over here, where it says transform, there are three uh, values you can specify. Position, rotation, and scale. So let's take scale for a second. You see how it's 1, 1, 1 right now? I don't want this to be a cube. I kind of want it to be more of a box, if you will. So I'm going to click uh, X next to scale, and I'm going to click 2. And our cube is now double the length. So using the, this technique, I'm just going to make this, oh, I don't know, 10? No. Let's make it a little longer. How about 50? That sounds fun. Yeah, 50. I also want to make it just a little thicker. So let's change the Z to 3. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Cool. So now, this will, be, this will be the bottom of our border. So let's scoot it down a little bit. And then let's push Control C and then V and grab this arrow, pull it back up to duplicate it. Now, because I just really want this to be precise, I'm going to click this one and put it at negative 20. 
I'm gonna click this one. I'm gonna put it at zero. Now it doesn't really matter. In fact, it it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that your two uh, bars here are twenty uh, units of measurement apart from each other. So whether that's positive 10, negative 10, 0, 20, negative 20, 0, whatever you want. Just make it nice and precise. So once you have two bars like this, you can now make a math problem. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's make it another one. So come over here. Let's create cube again. Come over here to transform, reset. Now, we want this one to go up. So first thing, let's change the Y to 3. Or excuse me, the Z to 3. That way, it's the same thickness. And then, let's change the Y to 20. You notice, that's the perfect height. So, let's grab this with the arrow over here. And slide it on over to the edge. That looks good. For this, you can just eyeball it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but if you want it to be, you can make it as perfect as you like. So copy and paste it, and drag another one over here. And drag it over just a little more. There we go. All right. And that is our border. Now this looks all well and good, but it doesn't look like, it doesn't look that good. You know, it, let, let's let's make it look a little cooler. So so let's go come come down here to our project folder at the bottom. Right click and say create material. And you should see this little icon or if you're using an older version you'll see a little sphere here. And let's call this border material. So with that done and border material selected, come over here Let's click this, and let's just bring this down a little bit, maybe like a little grayish. Yeah, that looks good. Then, let's just drag it onto each of the pieces. Done. That looks really cool. So with that done, let's make sure all these cubes are named border. And let's make sure they all have unique names. So this will be border two, and this one border three. There we go. So now what we want to do is, remember how I said the hierarchy is how we keep everything organized? If we just keep putting stuff in here, this is going to get cluttered. So let's make a folder, if you will. So right click and say create empty. Let's rename this to be border folder. Then let's click and control click all four of our border pieces and drag and drop them into our border folder. Just like that. And then done. Cool. So now it's time to put a, a player in here. So let's come down here to uh, the folder that we imported earlier. Let's go ahead and double click it. Let's go into props, props, small, cruise missile, prefabs. Now it doesn't really matter which one you use, so I'm just going to drag and drop one right here. Boom. Just like that. So everyone go ahead and drag a missile in here. And go ahead and reset the transform so it's in the middle. Now, you'll notice this missile is a little big. Or excuse me, there's one, one thing we need to do before we uh, fix the size of our missile. 
So let's come over here to our hierarchy and you and let's make a player. So let's say create empty and we'll call this player. And let's drag our cruise missile onto the player. Boom. Now make sure to reset the player transform and the missile transform. Otherwise things will get weird. So now that we have our missile inside of a player object, click the missile and let's change the scale. Let's see. Uh, I think this should be half as big. Yeah, half as big and maybe like a quarter as long. Yeah, that looks about right. Maybe a little longer. Oops. Point three five. Yeah, that looks good. So go ahead and mess around with your rocket. Make make it look nice. Make it the size you want it. But don't change its rotation because otherwise it things will get weird and messed up. So now, if let's get started on some scripts, shall we? So come down here to the project folder again, and uh, we don't want this anymore. So come over here to the side and click Assets, and you'll see this again. So before we go any further, this is going to get cluttered if we keep going like this, and a clean a clean folder is exactly what we want. So let's really quickly right click, say create folder. And let's call this folder materials and put our border material in there. Just like that. Now let's make another folder. And this time we're going to call it scripts. Now we'll click in here. Then right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this player controller, just like that. All right, with that done, go ahead and double click this to open it up and give it a second. Boom. All right. So let me drag this over here. All right, and you should see this. So, it is time to start programming. I will go nice and slow and I'll make sure that uh, you can uh, copy and paste the exact code uh, right into your code just in case you uh, mistype something or you're missing some uh, punctuation or something like that. But first thing we got to do is we got to come up here to above this start function, click enter a couple of times, and we're going to make some variables. We're going to call this public float vertical input. Then another one, public float horizontal input. Now these two will do exactly what you think they will. These will hold the these are the variables that will hold the information for what the player is actually pushing. So with that done, let's come down here to the update function and say uh, let's uh, give these uh, variables some numbers. So let's say vertical vertical input equals capital I input dot get axis open print open quotes vertical and put a, a semicolon at the end. Now let's do it again with horizontal input equals input dot get axis frontal just like that. All right. What these two are basically saying is, if you push A or A or D, then go side to side. 
If you push W or S, you go up or down. Or the arrow keys works too. So with that done, let's add two more lines of code. Transform dot translate, or excuse me, it has to be a lowercase t transform dot uppercase t translate. Uh, this is just a syntax thing that's important to remember. Uh, open print vector three dot up times time dot delta time times vertical input. All right, what was that? So let's go through this real quick. Transform dot translate basically says move this. Vector three uh, tells. If you remember, over in Unity, we had this transform over here. The vector 3 just gets access to these numbers here. Time.delta time is just here, so uh, it's more of an acceleration, not a snap on speed, snap off speed. And then vertical input uh, decides which way you're going. There's one more thing I want to put in here. We'll say times speed. Now speed should have red squiggly lines under it. That's okay. That's because we haven't defined what speed is. So let's come back up to the top. Say public float speed equals 10. It's 10, right? Um, if that doesn't... If that doesn't look nice, we can play with that number a little bit. So, let's see if this works. Go ahead and control S, then uh, go back over to Unity. Should take a second to load. Then, drag the player controller script onto the player, or you could throw it into the inspector. Either way works. And you should see this. So if we hit play, you'll see that it's not working. All right, one thing to note, make sure you spell things correctly. I accidentally misspelled vertical and horizontal over here. Make sure you spell things correctly, otherwise this will not work. I know because just about everything I type is a spelling mistake. <laughs> so with that fix, control save, let this load. All right, now if we hit play, this goes up and down. However, the camera's not following. We can change the rotation of this, and the rocket's not rotating. So let's first fix the camera. So to do that, we need another script. So let's come down here to our project manager. Say, create C-sharp script. And let's call this camera controller. Let's go ahead and double click it. All right, should give us a new uh, script. So this one's really easy, I promise. All we're gonna do is first, we need to say public game object, capital G and O, player. Make sure this is a capital G and a capital O. Other, other capitalizations refers to uh, different things. We gotta make sure that this one's capitalized. Next, we can delete this start function. We don't need it. 
and then the update function, we want to say transform dot position equals player dot transform dot position. Now there's one problem with that. You want to take a guess as to what? Yeah, three, two, one. All right. What this is saying is the transform of the camera will be the same as the transform of the player. That's not what we want. We want the camera to be just behind the player. So let's come up here. Let's say private this time because we don't need anything else to really see this number. Vector three offset. Now what this is saying is we're getting a vector three number. Now you, you guys remember that's what that transform is and that's going to be called offset. There's one more thing we need to do before we finish this. We need to say equals new vector three open print and then zero comma zero comma minus 10. I find that these numbers look really nice. If you guys want later, you can come here and change this. Now with that done, let's come back down here to our line of code. Say plus offset. What this will do is it will say, move the camera to the player's position plus offset, which means it will be behind the uh, player by 10 units. So if we save this, come back over to Unity. Let's uh, click on our main camera here. And let's drag camera controller into the inspector. Now you notice it says player and then it says none, game object. That means we need to come over here and grab our player from the hierarchy and drag it right over here. This will mean the camera will follow the player around. So if we hit play, now only up and down should work and you can see it does. It, the camera moves and it follows the uh, rocket exactly how we want. So let's get some side to side action, shall we? So let's come down here and let's go to our player controller and let's copy this entire line and paste it right below it. Next we're going to change up to right, Oops. right, and vertical input to horizontal input, then save. And one more thing let's change. Let's make it so that the rocket is actually looking at the direction it's going. And we're going to do it by doing this. Transform dot rotation equals quaternarian dot look rotation open print break play oops excuse me player rb and this will be squiggled in red for a little bit dot get relative point int velocity open print vector three dot zero and type out zero next close print and that all right really quick let's come up here to start let's say player rb equals get 
component. Alli put some alligator clips in there, then type rigid body and prints. Then that. Last thing we want to do, come up here to the top, say private rigid body player RB. All right, that was a lot, and I misspelled this. There we go. Get relative point velocity. All right, that was a lot. What did any of that mean? Well, these two together, what they do is they refer to a component called a rigid body on our player. Basically, it allows us to use physics. We'll put that on the player in just a second. Then this giant thing. So transform.rotation just refers to the angle at which the player is rotated. Uh, this defines where the uh, player should be looking. It's going to move it. And then this is telling us whichever direction the player is going, that's where we're going to look. So go ahead, save this, and go back over here. All right. So now let's click player and change one more thing. Let's click add component down here and let's type rigid body. And you should see this. And make sure to unclick use gravity because we are in space. So now if you click play, the rocket should move around and it should move side to side as well as up to down. Now, you notice there's two problems with this. First, those lines of code that we put in to get the rocket to look where it's going aren't working. And second, if you run into the border, whoa, what just happened? We broke it. So let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so the problem we're having is because the player here, it's not actually moving itself. Transform.translate is really cool because it's a really simple way to move stuff around. But if that thing needs to interact with other things in this world, it doesn't work. Because what it's doing is it's pretending that you're here and you're grabbing this arrow and moving it around. And you can see, I can move this through stuff. That's not what we want, we want to stop here. What we want this to do is to propel itself. And luckily, we just added the solution, the rigid body. So let's go back into our code and fix it. So we can keep most of this code but we need to change out transform.translate. So go ahead and delete that. And this time let's say player RB, which is the rigid body of our player, dot add force. What this is saying is the rigid body, the physics engine of the game, will push the uh, player instead of dragging it across like you're doing with the arrows. There's so one more thing we need to change. Right after speed, put a comma and say force mode dot impulse. This is, this just makes sure that you're accelerating correctly. So next, let's do the same thing to our other line of code. You can just copy and paste it right in. Oops. Let's see. Copy and paste. All right, just like that. So that should have fixed both of our problems. 
So, let's go test it. Once you've saved, go back into Unity. And hit play. So you notice, now our rocket's facing the way we're going. And if you run into something, you bounce back. You do, you do a lot of weird stuff though. That's okay. But this is the foundation for the game we're gonna make. So let's hit play and stop ourselves. And there's one thing we want to change though. In the ridge, this can sometimes happen. I don't know if we'll if you'll really be able to uh, replicate this bug, but sometimes uh, the rocket will hit the side and then it will just fly around the border. That's not what we want. So let's come over here to where it says constraints under the rigid body and say freeze position Z. Only Z though, because we want it to be able to rotate anywhere it wants to go. And we want it to be able to move in the X and Y directions. All right. That was a lot, I know. But we are actually almost done with the main part of this game. So the next thing we got to do is add two more things. Come over here to the hierarchy and say create 3D object cylinder. And then transform reset. All right. What this is going to be is the start and ending platforms, but it's a little big. So let's make it smaller, say 0.25. Now it's still a little big. How about 0.1? Yeah, that looks good. And then let's grab this arrow and drag it down a little bit. So it's not in, in the rocket. We don't need that. All right. So you might have noticed there's this little green sphere around it. And that is called a collider, specifically a capsule collider. You don't need to memorize terms or anything. But if it's sticking up like this, it's not going to work. So what you need to do is come over here to the inspector, right click on the capsule collider and say remove component. But the colliders are, are how things connect with each other. So we need to do one more thing. We need to click on it again, say add component, but this time we want a box collider. And it should give you a perfect little collider here. And yes, it's hanging out on the edges, but that's okay, we can live with that. So let's rename the cylinder, and you can do that either by coming over here and clicking rename, or you can just click up here. And let's call this start pad. Next, slide this over a little bit, duplicate it, slide, slide the duplication over here. And let's rename this to end pad. These two are going to be basically the same, but we do want to give them different colors. So let's split them up. And what we'll and let's go into our materials folder down here at the bottom. Now let's make a new material. Create material. We're going to call this start pad material. And let's make this a nice green. Yeah, just like that. Go ahead and drag this onto the start pad. And then let's make one more material end pad material. All right, and let's make this one a red. Yeah, that looks good. Boom, just like that. All right, the idea is our player will start right on top of the green pad, and we want to hit the red pad to finish the level. Now, To finish the level, we need to add one more script, and I promise this is the last script we will do. So let's come back over here to the assets, onto the scripts, 
right click, create C sharp script. Let's call this next level and double click it. All right, I promise this one's really simple. In fact, we don't even need any of this. So let's delete all of it. So first let's say public string next level equals just like that. And let's go ahead and type level one in there just like that. So, so all before all our variables have been numbers, but now we need it to be a word because we want to name the level we want to go to. And we got to make this public. Otherwise we won't be able to uh, change it in the unity editor for each level. So let's click enter a couple of times. And now it's time to create a class. This one's very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to type void on trigger enter. And if you see the uh, IntelliSense, do it. Go ahead and hit enter. And you should see this. Now, this is a big scary thing. All it's saying is when something touches my collider. That's all it's saying. Now, there's one thing we got to change up here. Come up here to where it says uh, using Unity Engine. Right below it, we need to say using using Unity Engine dot scene management. This will enable us to switch our scenes. Now we need to come down here and the last line of code we will type is scene manager dot load scene next level. All this is doing is saying when something touches me we will load the next level. So go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. All right, the idea here is when our player hits the red circle, we load up the next level. So let's add our next level script to the uh, red pad, the end pad. And then we're going to need to come over here to player and click add component and let's add a box collider to it. Now that doesn't look right, does it? So we need to edit it. So come over here to this little, to where it says edit collider and there's this little weird button here. Go ahead and click that and it will uh, create some tiny kind of hard to see dots on, in, on all the sides of this box. What I want you guys to do is grab each of these dots, drag them down, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just drag it to be about where the rocket is. Uh, length is more important here. So just drag it up here, and yeah, that looks about right. Drag it back, that looks about right. Make sure you get the side to side ones. that and that. All right. And you can click that and we're done. All right. So this uh, collider, colliders are really cool because they can do two things. One, they can act as a physical box in the world that things can run into. Or two, they can trigger events. Now for our little red circle here, we want it to trigger an event. We want it to start the next level. So let's come over here and right below where it says edit collider, it says is trigger. It has a checkbox next to it. Check that checkbox. This means that our script here can now use the collider as a trigger, which is exactly what we want. Now I tell you to test it, 
but we don't have a second level yet. So let's fix that. So let's come back over here to the assets and see where it says scenes here. Double click that and notice there's one thing in here. It says sample scene. This is a scene we've been working in. So let's right click on it and say rename to level L E V E L. I swear I can spell one. And let's not put any spaces there just to make things easier. And once you hit enter, it will say, do you want to reload the scene? Go ahead and click reload. That's okay. And now it's renamed. And you can see up here, it says level one now. Now, I'm a bit of an idiot. See, I did not save before I did that. So, it went ahead and went to my last save, which was before we added in the circles. So I'm going to have to put those back. So I'll do that real quick. All right, I fixed it. So if yours, if your circles got deleted too, go back and quickly put, put them back in. And if you need to do that, go ahead and pause the video real quick and do that. So we got our circles back. I made sure to put the script back on. Uh, our next step is to get all this stuff into another scene to make several levels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the scenes folder. We want to right click, create scene. Uh, where is it? Here it is, scene. We're gonna call this level two. All right. Now, before we can go and add stuff to level two, we need to make them what are called prefabs. So let's come up here to assets, create folder, prefab, call it prefab. Prefab is just a fancy term for uh, just an item that can be instantiated really quickly. It's just, it's just like a file if that's how you want to think of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to click our border folder here with all the border blocks. We're going to drag it into the project folder. And there it is. And we're going to do that with the uh, player start and end pads as well. Just like that. All right, so now what we want to do Let's come back up to assets, go into scenes, and level two. Make sure you save. Now, don't be alarmed, your stuff's not gone. If you click on level one again, it's back. So level two, let's go into the prefabs folder we just made, put the border in there. Boom, just like that. Make sure you reset the transform. If you do it on the folder and not the individual blocks, it will reset the whole thing, which is exactly what we want. So drag everything else in here, start and end pads, and just like that. And reset those. Except for uh, this needs to be 0.1. Sorry, not that one. Y needs to be 0.1. And this one also needs to be 0.1. Okay. And just like that. Now, I done goofed a little, but that's okay. So, uh, you can just grab these and move them like that. And that works just fine. Now, you also need to make sure you come over here to the camera and add the script for it. So let's come over here to scripts, camera controller, and drag it right onto the camera. And make sure you specify the player is the one you wanna follow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag this down here. 
just put it like right there. And just like that. All right. So let's go back to scene to level one. Make sure you save. All right. And what we're going to do is let's put this over here a little ways. Then let's take this one and put it over here a little ways. Now let's take our player and put it right on top of our little green circle here. Now our game is complete. The gameplay is complete, but there's a couple more things we want to do. First, let's quickly play test to make sure that all this works. And let's make sure that our end pad says next level is level two. Make sure it says level two, otherwise it won't work. Let's go ahead and hit play. And here we are. All right, we got our rocket. It's flying around great. It's not going through walls. That's good. It's just what we want. When we hit this, uh-oh, it didn't work. Now, I'd be surprised if you knew about this, but there's one step we forgot to do. So let's do that real quick. So make sure you're in level one. What I want you guys to do is come up here to file, build settings, and you should see something like this. Now, where it says scenes to build, there's an empty box here. I want you to click the add open scenes button and you'll notice level one is in there now. That's good. We need to make sure every scene you guys make ends up in this list. Otherwise, this won't work. So now go to level two and do the same thing. Now with both of these levels in here, our next level script should work. So go ahead and close that and save. Go back to level one and hit play. All right, now if we fly over here and hit the reds, oh no, hey look, it worked. And it worked just fine. That's exactly how we want it to work. And if we even hit this one now, because that one's still called level one, it took us back to level one. Boom, just what we wanted. All right, there are two more things I want to show you guys before I set you loose to make your own levels. First, this background is kind of dull and boring. And second, there's no fire. There should be like fire spewing from our missile. So let's first change the background. So let's, so what we're gonna need to do is uh, open up a Google tab. And we're gonna need to go back to the asset store. All right, this time we're going to search for a star field, F-I-E-L-D, skybox. And this first one should come up. Go ahead and download and import this one just like we did earlier. So get it, open it in Unity, star field skybox import. And import. All right. Once that's done, We give it just a second. So this is another important thing. Be patient, especially when importing and saving and like adding scripts 
Be patient. Sometimes Unity just needs a minute to load itself. All right, I just skipped ahead to when we're to when it's done. That took a little while. So we come over here to assets. We should see a new folder called Starfield Skybox. Go ahead and click it, and you'll have this little skybox picture here. I want you to drag that right here and let go. You see, this is freaking sweet. This is honestly my favorite skybox. This is my favorite background ever, and it looks perfect for what we're building. All right, the next step takes a little customization. Let's zoom in over on our rocket here. This side actually. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click, create a effect particle system. And this should show up. Let's name this particle system Rocket Fire. All right, this is going to be like the exhaust from a rocket, the fire, the cool stuff. Right now, it doesn't look all that impressive, but we'll change that. First thing I want you guys to do, over here in the inspector, we have all these uh, options. Don't be scared to mess with stuff. If you break it, delete it, make a new one, fix it. So really quick, let's go to, uh, not our mission, shape. Let's go to shape. Let's change angle to zero, make it straight. Then let's change radius and radius thickness to as low as it will go. This way, everything comes out in a straight line. Now before we go any further, let's drag this onto the player and then reset the transform. Now we don't want it shooting that way, that's the wrong way. So let's change the rotation of the X to 180. There we go. And then let's use the arrows to pull it back a little bit, right about there. All right. So next thing we want to do is we want to make these dots into longer ovals. This will make the fire look a little better. So let's come down here to the very bottom where it says renderer. Click that, where it says render mode billboard. Change it, <coughs> excuse me. Change it to stretched billboard. And then two should be fine. And we can change that number later if we want. Next, that's a lot of fire. So let's come up here, let's change the lifetime. Let's just bring that down a little. Let's also increase the speed, or naturally now let's decrease the speed. Increase lifetime just a little. That looks great, but it's the wrong color. And it stays the same size. So let's change the size first. Let's come over here, and where it says, let's see, uh, size over lifetime. There it is. Let's click that. That changed, didn't it? <laughs> so let's click on this, and you can see how it's going right now is it's getting bigger over time. That's not what we want. So let's click this, and you notice down here, it changes. Now you have a couple of options. Go ahead and click through. Find the one you like the best. I like this one. I think this one looks really good, where it's a curve downward. Now that looks sweet. I like it just like that. So, but it's still the wrong color. So let's change that. Let's click color over lifetime and click that. And turn lock. All right. Now where, right next to where it says colors, click this bar. All right. Over here, let's change the starting color to a nice fire orange. Yeah, nice and dark. And then let's change the end to black. This will give it like a cool smoky effect. And we can change where we want this. We want a little more orange, a little more black. I'll give it a tad more orange. I think this looks really cool. So now if we hit play, 
boom, we have ourselves a little trail of fire. Now, feel free to play with stuff, mess with it however you like. Uh, I'm going to move mine back just a tad, just a little more. And by the way, if you the if the preview stops playing and you see this little icon, click on the uh, the particle effect and hit play. And it should show you. So I'm going to let you guys go. Feel free to mess with this a little bit. Make it your own. You want blue fire. You want green fire maybe. You want it to be a little longer, a little shorter. You want it to fade to pink. You know, do whatever you want. And also make several levels. Just like how we've been doing. Make sure you add a skybox. Make sure you add the script to everything. And I will. And the last thing you want to do is make sure that your player prefab has this fire now. So click on player. And then where it says overrise, click that and say apply all. Next, you're done. Just everyone go and make your own uh, levels and have fun. <laughs>